Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Iowan Adventures, a world created and ruled by the Fae. I'm Jessica. I also go by I Sneak Stars online in places like TikTok and Instagram. And I'll be your shenanigans sovereign tonight. It's been a minute. Uh, so our shows, let me run you through them. Monday nights, obviously, the Iowan Adventures. Tuesday nights, we have State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign run by uh, Cottlesworth at 7.30 p.m. EST, except for tomorrow, who because he is getting back from Gen Con. Uh, Thursday nights, we have The Lost Continent at 9 p.m. EST by Mr. Markham. Uh, and Friday nights, we have The Legends of Kralis, a um, completely new TTRPG that Hilarious Game Master has created and runs at 10.30 p.m. EST. Alternating Sundays, we have The Rumors of Magic for a little bit more by our uh, very illustrious Mazrix24 at 7.30 p.m. EST. And uh, don't forget to follow us on our Discord and YouTube and all of that other fun stuff. Okay, that is enough talking for me. Uh, Kara, would you like to take over? Hello, I'm Kara. Um, I will be playing Gilly. Uh, the Water Genasi Barbarian, and you can find me on the internet at Imaginary Caro on TikTok. That's pretty much the only thing that I do on the internet nowadays. Um, Dan. Dan, it's me, Dan. Hi. Um, you can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I will be playing Damascus Silver, the Half Elf Bard Warlock. James, let's finish it off. That's me. Hi, I'm James. Uh, tonight I'll be playing either <clears throat> R of Deazark, our uh, human druid, uh, or his counter counterpart, alter ego, depending on how you uh, want to call that. Varian Arbor, the Samari storm sorcerer that seems to share a body with him. Uh, so that's all depending on the dice roll. And uh, I I'm very excited to finally be back in the hot seat, as it were. The The shrubbery seat because we're in a jungle i don't know that's the, the best i got the th I, the thorns in my side okay but uh not <laughs> no not yet but they're coming um and that's it i'm excited to be here to roll some dice and be uh, back at the table with my friends playing some dnd yeah. uh last time in aa episode 65 home for arrest um a rev had a bear tantrum and Ray Bella tried to call him, but got tricked with an empty promises of lemon drops. Uh, Damascus stirred up trouble with talk of a brothel, making Faisa grumpy. And uh, she suddenly doesn't like apples anymore. I guess blame it on mis the misplaced Atma? Question um, mark. On the road, the enc they encountered uh, two treants, one dying and another one mourning their partner's loss. Uh, instead of engaging in um battle the party detected a dark magic a weird sort of necromancy um trying to hmm. Faza, using her magic uncovered a sickness in Rhea. with uh the tree and saved they learned about an ancient the an ancient tree split into three parts the tree of The ancient tree of whispers, more or less. The tree of insanity and the tree of redemption or reincarnation. I am all over the place today. It's fine. Uh, to get the bark they need, they must prove themselves worthy. A true uh, friend to the trees. So don't send Varian, is what I'm saying. Um, cue more shenanigans uh, with wind cannons and chimera bear trouts. And, uh, you know, you get home. You find a Rev's fancy tree hut and someone breeding giant falcons. Uh, secrets spill, family drama unfolds, and a Rev's consciousness, consciousness gets whisked away to spend time with uh, his lovely demon boys. And I believe that is where we are picking up because Damascus, you're muted, Bib. I know him. Yes. What's up? You had something you wanted to do, you said. Yeah, I do. It's a bad idea, but I'm going to do it. Um, okay. That evening, I am going to try and get some, like, 
So at some point in that evening, I am going to try and excuse myself to a point where I can be alone, basically. Okay. Where are you going? <laughs> the washroom. <laughs> I just um I'm gonna go get some fresh air. Do you want me to come with you? Normally I would. I mean you're welcome to. I was thinking that along the way I might need to reach out to Belloth. Why? Remember that bottle that Tamina told us about? The thing mm -hmm. that can help us strengthen a god? Well, we need a tear that a, a tear from a god, which I don't know too many of them, and some sort of flower that only appears where she touches the ground or cries or something. Either way, we're going to need her help. So let me get this straight. You want to go and ask Bella for a favor? Because that's worked so well for you before. I mean... And, and why? Why are we making this potion? Because if the thing that's coming is as strong and powerful as Tamina's making it out to be, we're going to need as much help as we can get. And who are you giving this potion to? I mean, we've got a couple options. The obvious mm -hmm. one would be Beloth herself, if she's willing to fight with us. Yeah, so if we want to give the god that has decided that you're her fiancé and is still trying to call, cash that check in, more power. You know any other gods we can hand it off to? I can give it to Winter. I think you should leave. You're right. <laughs> Go for a walk. Taser, darling, I'm open to suggestions. I'm just running out of ideas. We are in way over our heads. Did somebody call my name? Hey, Winter, no, we're just chatting. About me? I mean, no, I was talking about the season. Oh, okay. He goes back in yeah. his room. <laughs> you, I hate you have a better... Hmm? I hate him. Why? Because he's, he's trying my brother's face. I, I know. Listen, if you have a better idea who we can give this potion to, I am all ears. We could just give Tamina this bottle. Then what? I mean, is this a potion that we should really be brewing? I think it works very well as a just-in-case moment. Whatever Damascus. Go and talk to your girlfriend. She ain't my... You can come if you want. We can talk to her together. Yeah, I you're probably you're not gonna get anything if I'm there. That's why I'm just gonna <laughs> do it on James. my own. <laughs> James, like, no, do not no. do that. I, I will unmute. I will go on record. <laughs> Do not, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do not bring Faza to Belot, please. <laughs> yeah, no, that was. I uh, I I'll head on out, kind of like leave the apartment. Jerk. Look for privacy. <laughs> jerk, you're a jerk. You're a jerk. Okay, you uh you leave the apartment um. You guys all had room. You guys did have rooms in uh, Arev's place, but if you would have stayed in the apartment, that's cool too. Mm, actually, did everybody else stay in the apartment? I mean, I feel like Arev went to bed in his own room. That makes sense. So you've heard of a cat nap, but like, have you heard of a bear nap? <laughs> He's a bear soon. in his bed. Whoa. And he's not just a bear, he's a cub. Adorable. <laughs> he's gone back to being so a baby cute. bear. Okay. Um, if nobody is in the hut, then 
I'll go in the hut to have this conversation. <laughs> so you cast you cast this in your room and then go inside. <laughs> no, I like step outside. So you step, okay, so you go outside. Yeah. You're outside yeah. uh, a Rev's treehouse and you cast this spell, go in yeah. the hut. What do you do? I will go into the kitchen. I will put a pot on for some water to boil to boil some water for some tea. Okay. And grab a couple cookies. Somewhere. Put them out on the table. Somewhere. Somewhere. You don't know where he is right now. You feel Talon. Yes. Yes, mortal. I know. There's a reason I'm doing that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with a tea set out for myself and a spot across from me with another cup of tea and some cookies in the center, I am going to call out to the power of this place and the connection that I have with my with Bella as my patron and just go Bella, darling, I know you're listening to everything everywhere always at all times because it seems like the kind of thing a god would do. I was hoping we could have a chat. There might be some things we should talk about and see what happens. Roll me persuasion. Gladly. I love rolling persuasion. I'm an eloquence bird. Should be religion, uh, but I'm 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 leaning into your eloquenceness. Okay. That is a uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Oh, you're rolling badly. Yeah, I rolled a four, which becomes a ten, and plus thirteen is a twenty-three. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, with a twenty-three, you're asking her to come to you. With a 23, you get a small vial of this almost like iridescent glimmering gold liquid appears in front of you on the table. Can I what the fuck it is? Can I do I what the fuck it is? Um, What are you doing? What are you doing to, to figure that out? Let's go. I don't have the tech magic. Let's go. Arcana check, maybe. Okay, but how are you? You so you're just looking for the magic in that. Yeah, I'm trying to sense. Magic go for it. In it. Cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna stay with rolling real good. That's a nat one. I don't know. It's gold glimmering magic, it's fucking de- divine shit. You don't know. A dip of pinky. It's a potion of etherealness. A drink, the drink. Shoot it back. You Shoot are back. outside Belloff's castle. Can I say I grabbed the, t- the kettle before I go? She grabbed the kettle before you go. <laughs> what do you do? I will start walking, headed to the castle. But Lyle is in front of the door already, glaring at you. Evening. Go away. Are we gonna do this big song and dance every time? Yes. Wouldn't because the only way you get through here every time is with winter. The only way I get here every time is with winter. So the question is, how'd I get here this time? If your boss didn't want me here. Potions exist. Scrolls? Yeah, I pull out the vial and hand it to him. Here you go. Potions exist, but they don't usually appear directly in front of me when I call out Beloth to have a little chat. You see him take the vial, look at it, roll his eyes, and then step back and open the door for you. What cheek do you see? I just okay. You're in jail. It was a two. Uh, He just pats him on the arm and goes, "That's what I thought." You. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I gotta roll something. Okay. You get a wing slap upside the head as he shoves you inside the door. (laughs) Don't be jealous. 
Next time I'll come visit you, all right? Don't. Just don't. All right. You don't I know you want to hang out. He slams and... the front door. <laughs> How dramatic. I will head to Beloth's where would I think Beloth is? Well, you have been to her globe room. You've been to the sunroom. You've been to her bedroom. Let's this check a giant globe room castle. first. Let's check globe room first. Okay. You uh, head up the stairs. People are kind of watching you. There's many, there's still a lot of uh, angelics around. And uh, you head to the globe room. The door is closed. What do you do? I give it the knock and then I open it without waiting. <laughs> Sun is shining. The brilliant globe in front of you is as divine as ever with souls floating around, but the room is empty. Ooh, hang on. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I thought better of it. Okay. What were I was you going very to tempted do? To, now I need to know. I was very tempted to use that globe. If you even can. If yeah, that, that's then that I don't think that Damascus can, but Damascus is dumb, so I rolled to see if Damascus thinks he can. Because okay. sometimes I can't make decisions for my characters. Um I will try her I guess I'll try her bedroom. You walk all the way down to her bedroom. There are two large golden doors in front of you, closed. Again, this time I'll wait. I'll give it a knock. Just like uh, shaving a haircut. Do, 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 do. Shaving a don't. haircut? What the fuck? You never heard um, shaving a haircut, two pence? Never mind. That's what that's okay, knock is yes. called. Yes, I don't even know what that song, like where that song came from. But thank you for letting me know. It's a barber song? Burning. I have no idea. What the? F- a shit. What do you think it? Okay. It's the. the... <laughs> I can't even with you, sir. Um, I also know the song. <laughs> see, it's not you did just not me. make it up. <laughs> okay, you head. You head to Belos room. You knock on the door. You wait. And you wait. And you wait. I mean, after like about 30 seconds, he's going to try and open it and peek in. You open the door. It's just as grand as you remember. Her bed still right in the center of it, as plush and as ever. Empty. Now, what's the point of giving me a potion to get here if you ain't going to be waiting somewhere I can find you? And he'll turn around and... You come face to face with another Asimar. With white, paper white skin. Yellow eyes. uh, Markings on her face that are tattoos of sorts. That are arrows that go this way and that way down her eyes. She has a couple piercings and long wavy, curly, voluminous blonde hair. Amber wings behind her. Turn around. What are you doing, mortal? Someone really should put bells on y'all. I was looking for your boss, matter of fact. How did you get here? I was Living invited. Living on here. And yet here I am. So you can understand my confusion. I was invited. I mean, I asked for an invitation, but invitation was extended. You just fell an... off. That would be why I'm poking my head into her bedchambers, yeah. You know where mm-hmm. I might find her? She takes her shoulder 
and turns you towards the window and brings you to the window to look outside. I let her. Got a name, by the way? Celestia. Pretty. And I... yours? They work, rules work for whatever you are. Take your chances and find out. I mean, you gave me yours. Come to Damascus. Did I? Shit, I didn't think of that. Um, look out the window, Damascus. I'll go look out the window. When you look out the window, uh, you almost have to blind your eyes for a second because everything gets incredibly bright as the sun reflects off of a field of sundrops where Beloth sits. All right. I say, well, appreciate you pointing me in the right direction. And hang on. I have how high off the ground is this window? What are you trying to do? Misty step out of it and onto the field. <laughs> what? Go ahead. <laughs> I do that thing I just said. I'll just go appreciate you pointing me in the right direction. Give her a little wink and bam. I disappear into a, pus a burst of mist and reappear on the ground outside the window. Crushing a patch of the flowers. So I'm delicate. That you need. I am very delicate. <laughs> I. You still weigh more than they do. I mean, yeah, but I gotta stand somewhere. Ooh. Didn't mean to. It's fine. What are you calling for? Uh, amongst other things, I was hoping I'd be able to get my hands on. Well, some of these. Believe Off it or flowers. not. They're very pretty. What do you need my flowers for, Damascus? It's a bit of a story. If you got a moment, I could tell you the brief version. So and you're asking me. <laughs> She's just like, if I, <laughs> just like the fully like, if I, I have a moment. Me... You're the one who's going to die in the blink of an eye. That's true. Try not to blink then. So, you just blinks like went. four times in a row. Now you're doing that on purpose. I am All there. Right. I will. She, she, you said she's sitting, right? Mm-hmm. I'll walk up and sit next to her. As you probably crush crushing some more flowers. Those flowers. <laughs> you sit next to her. So we found this I, thing. I'm sorry. Why are you here with the teapot? Oh, oh yeah. Did you uh, I had this whole thing where I was gonna pour you a drink and be all pleasant and congenial, but then you invited me here instead of me inviting you there. And I thought I'd bring the Went through all the work of making tea for you. Found it be nice. There's an eye roll. And then a flourish of her hands and two teacups in front of you. I pour some tea for both of us. She takes her teacup. Uh, and two friendly conversations. And maybe save in the world. And I'll hold up for like a, a little cheers. The sigh. She puts the cup back in the in the grass and the flowers. Did she drink it? No. God damn it. Ah, uh, she. The... You were. It was close. Right. It was very close. You came. What you came to sit and talk to her about something, and then you went to save in the world and all of that. And she was just like, "Oh, for fuck's sakes." Don't ever Am come I... to visit me just for me. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, I know. But I didn't. We found this thing. This 
bottle. The laughs of me, I, I, I didn't know what it did. And apparently our brainy person got erased from existence or something. I don't know. It's a little confusing to me, but Tamina walked us through the beginnings of it. The short version is it can give someone a significant amount of power. And with what it sounds like is coming, we're going to need a significant amount of power. But there's a spell that needs to be done in order to empower it, in order to make it actually work. And like any pain in the ass spell, there's a list of ingredients and things we need to do in order to get it all set up. One of them is one of these here flowers. Why not bring me this bottle? Well, it's not to me now. Hang on. Why not bring me this bottle? Oh, I mean, because we need it all to collect all the stuff that we need to get in order to use it. I could do that. This is me thinking. Damascus mm -hmm. is smarter than I am. Mm hmm Is he? And he is more charming than I am. Let's put it that way. Uh, he will just go... I ain't questioning your capability, just that there is a lot that needs to be done. And you've got more than enough on your plate as it is. You've been holding this entire plane together for you know how long. It ain't fair to put more on you. I'm just looking for a little bit of help so we can do what needs to be done and make sure that it weren't all in vain. End we'll of the day, we got the same goal. You wouldn't have put all this work into keeping this place going. You didn't care about it. We're trying to make sure that we're helping you keep it on, keep it on. And heat rolls. Ooh, 28. And you can keep the bottle. Mind if I take one of these flowers along with me? She reaches forward and plucks one. He'll take it. And he'll put it into a little pocket, all nice and safe. I appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be able to collect the rest and put it all together. We're pretty close, all things considered. There is one other thing. And what would that be? You ain't gonna like it. I have not enjoyed most of your visits. So. Oh. Now that's just mean. Would you like me to enjoy your visits? She leans into you. Let's focus. <clears throat> I am focused. I, uh, on an entirely wrong thing. Uh, I mean, you went to my bedroom. I was looking for I... you. Wait, how do you know? You know everything. The last thing we need is, well, the other thing we need your help with is a tear. It's just one. It's a mess. Here, sadness. Well, you are holding one of my tears. Is it the same thing? Would I put it there twice if it was? No. I didn't think so. I'll go. I think it's a little more literal than that. You make me cry, Damascus. I wasn't planning on it, but 
I don't really have much choice. All right, break my heart. <laughs> Go for it. I feel like that's dangerous. Any chance you can cry on your own? Maybe like, I you don't know, pull a hair or something? You're asking for a tear of sorrow? Uh, yeah, that's that's. You're gonna make it me says. cry. It's gotta be from the heart, Damascus. Uh, that's gonna be a problem then. I don't want to make you cry. You. I'm whatever. Uh, you're, uh, amongst other things, incredibly powerful and could squish me like an ant. But. You're also a good person, and I don't want to hurt you if I don't have to. I don't think you can make me cry. Maybe just keep my request in mind so if something happened that does, you could... Save a tear for you. I mean... Potentially. Would you mind? If the... You're making them anyway. So just... Sure, if I cry, I'll save you a tear. Appreciate it. Now he's like, how the fuck do I make her cry? All right. We'll brainstorm a plan to maybe expedite that process in a way that, you know, you know is only for the the mission. All right, so then I don't have to cry, is what you're telling me. No, you do. Uh, you're only hurting my feelings so that you can get the, the item that you need. It's not, you're not very good at this. I'm not good at hurting people, no. I'm usually good at the other thing. What other thing? Making people happy and like me. You are at that. Appreciate Want to make me happy? She's scooted in a little bit closer. As tempting as that is, Beloth, and don't get me wrong, it is real tempting. You know Faze and I are a thing. There's an eye roll. I know you don't like her, but she's important. And she's important to me. And so are you, but... Just... Imagine <laughs> Masterix in the chat. Get married to Faza! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might work. Just be nice to her. That's all I'm asking. Have I been mean? Lately? <laughs> I mean... A couple days ago, you were calling her a thing. She is a thing. She... Maybe she was. But now she's something more. You know that. I don't know what having Atma in her is doing to her. But it's... I've already noticed a change in her. I don't know what it means. But... If it means what I think it means, she might be around for, for a while. Longer than I might be. So, you can ask the two of you got along at least. We will get along, Damascus. Huh? Because we have time. The luxurious mortals don't, I suppose. Now you're catching on. Well. I'm going to make do what I can with what I got. Which means I don't want to have to spend it worrying about saying the wrong thing and pissing you off. You're important to the world and to me. So is she. Have I ever enacted my rage on you, Damascus? A kindness that I've always appreciated. 
then why aren't you worrying? Natural side effect of spending the last few months dealing with gods and giant eyeballs in the sky. And Tamina got real scary one time. So did Atma, did actually. You know? I mean, maybe that was just a dream. It gets hard to tell things bleed into one another. She puts a hand on your shoulder and uh, you feel like a sense of almost peace kind of flow through you. I never have to feel nice. He like basks in it for a moment and then just kind of shakes himself out of it. All right. That's really all I came to talk about trying to get this thing together. I appreciate your help. You want to go? I probably should. Faze is going to be mad enough that I came here. I'm trying to there's, win her there's over a, There's on... a grin on her face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to win her over on you too, by the way. I know she don't like you, but I think she should. You're you put on a tough act, but you're a sweetheart. And I, guess, I just think... You, how do you think I would be anything else? I am the heart of your world and this one's. I'm aware. But sun can illuminate, but it can also burn, right? If all you see is the heat, it can get overwhelming. I suppose it could be for a creature of the darkness. I don't know who it was, but I remember reading in a book somewhere that without... You can read? Once or twice. Oh. Without light, there can't be darkness. And without darkness, light is meaningless. It's two sides of the same coin, right? No. Right. <laughs> to mortals, yes. But darkness was here before everything. The nuts. Fair enough. And it'll be here long after. Then let's just make sure that that ain't going to happen for a real long time. Hmm? Go on, Damascus. Uh, he will lean over and give her a kiss on the cheek. And say, it gives you a look. Dummy on Bachi. You're in jail too. He oh, does. you are rolling horrible. Mm -hmm. she, she points at her lips. Yeah, he gives her a real kiss. Oh, Not... My heart, be still. Be still, my beating heart. Best be getting back. Go on. And she takes out another vial. He will take the vial and just, as he's about to drink it, go, mind if I pluck another one of these? For what? Humor me. Oh. He plucks one, puts it into her hair, and goes, it's good luck, and then shoots it back. As you return back to your uh, condo, you hear, you hear, uh, actually, roll, roll me a uh, religion tech. Okay, I am running out of good dice. Perfect. Uh, that's a five total. Oh, a five total. Mm -hmm. You hear nothing, but you feel bomb inside you. You're not sure what he's trying to tell you. You're going to have to speak up. Visit me in a dream or something. You know, hop out of the portal. You hop out of the portal? You go back? I will head back to, to my room. Yeah. Get ready to get yelled at. 
when you get back to your room. This is not there. Describing one of these that are good. I will go. Does she have a room? Probably not. No, she was staying with you. Okay, then he'll leave it be for now. Go to bed? I guess so, yeah. Okay. Uh, Caro, is there anything that you wanted to do? Um, not particularly. She would typically go to the beach and do her little swim. But mm -hmm. if nobody else, if everybody else was staying in the treehouse, Gilly would also have stayed in the treehouse. So she's sawing logs. You are sleeping. You have no idea that your hair has been braided within an inch of its life by a little tiny fairy dragon who is putting twigs and little bits of grass and pretty uh, leaves in your hair to make it look very regal oh my God. and delightful like you're a druid <laughs> and he Excellent. is sitting there just bored and making your hair look amazing um midnight barber he does this a lot uh Arev, as you as you are asleep you really aren't. You are in back in front of that fireplace with uh, Vistrixen and Rananel. Uh, at this point, uh, Vistrixen will lean over to you and say, All right. I think it's time you run along then. And Rananel will go, mm, I have something to show him first. Vestriction raises an eyebrow and goes, run along then. And Renan will look at you and, and, and offer you a hand. I don't know why, but in my head, I pictured like them both sitting, but a rev laying down with his head in Vestriction's lap and his legs trailed over Renanel's legs. Hundred percent. You are getting head scratches by just, Vistrixen. And like Renanel's just kind of like been sitting there, like with my legs trailed over him, kind of like, you know, like looking <laughs> anywhere else. And so I kind of like throw my legs down and sit myself up and look between the two of them and say, "Well, if it's time to go, then." Show me what you want, I suppose. What? No kiss. I'll save another one for later. For now, I'd rather just go for a walk. He waves your his hand for you to go. And Renanel will take yours and lead you through the very gloomy, very Adams family esque mansion. And out into the backyard, where you notice that there are, it's a garden of sorts with plants that are incredibly, you don't understand as a druid. They don't make sense to you. And he goes, mm, you tried with the flowers, so I thought I would show, okay, just come this way. And he will lead you all the way to uh, the back of this incredibly large garden I, to like, a pond. And As I'm passing by, I'm like, looking at some kind of like gently reaching out but like not quite touching but like still every, every now and then you're like 
you're like, oh, and you like one of the trees seems to like pulse a little bit. And you're like, no, I don't know if this this should be something that I touch. Another one has like eyeballs that follow you as you go back, you know? Oh, great. It's, it's just a little like scary. <laughs> and le- he gets you hmm? le- le- less floral and more people. Something more something. Yeah. They they do feel alive in a sense. You're not sure how. Yikes. Yeah, and he takes you to a murky pond with black water and these black, almost lily pad-esque flowers that are on top. They all look withered and dead. And he goes, mm, <clears throat> these are These are blood lilies. I don't suggest touching them, but if you want to see the trick, can I have a small amount of your blood? Don't you already have some of my blood from before? You mean the blood that I put in my mouth? (laughs) Ah, um... This, do you promise this is just for whatever you want to show me and not another trick? He puts a hand across his heart and then raises it up. What? You don't trust me? You ask me to trust you. I Hmm. trust that you are a being of a particular nature. He smiles. Mm. Smart. I, like, gently bite my thumb until I draw a bit of blood, and I hold my thumb out. He takes your your thumb, and he kind of just squeezes it over the pond. And as the blood hits the water... You begin to see it change. The pond starts becoming this light red color all throughout it. And the flowers that are on top of that blood lily begin to bloom. The black turns into this really dark red. And the flower inside begin- comes up and is are all these like, they look almost a, they're lilies but they look the color of roses it is actually quite pretty though you they can't do this without blood I... and then just as suddenly they begin to fade it, it was only a small amount can, can I attempt to like druid craft uh like a little bit and just like gently guide like the water and bring the lily closer to the shore of the pond and see if i can maybe like bolster its strength a little bit you can you are able to bring the lily to you what are you doing i'd like to preserve it if i can this is fading so if you want to preserve it you'll have to give it another drop of blood I mean, my thumb is still bleeding. So I Drop just... Drop another yep. bit of blood on that. Uh, how do you preserve it? With your druid craft? Um, let me see if I have something a little bit stronger. Mm, well, I don't really have any nature-based or preservation spells prepared. You can try so, with your druid craft. I'll make you roll a d20 for me and add your um you cast with wisdom. I do. And add your wisdom to that. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh so 21. You reach towards the flower to preserve it after you've dropped a bit of blood on it and 
uh, Ranita will stop you and actually pick the flower out of the water for you. And then you, you, when it's in your hands, you are able to cast this spell and it seems to freeze that flower in its place. Can I keep it? You can keep it. Thank you. You're welcome. Time to go. And he will lean forward very, very quickly because Renal is very squiddish, squiddish, skittish most of the time and gives you a peck on the cheek. Much better than squiddish. I, I don't. Yeah. Ooh. We ain't we ain't here for that yet. Baldur's Gate three vibes. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> okay, I need to start playing that. Just just for Astarian. And uh you get pulled back into your your body. Where while you are floating in nothingness, a dream begins to take shape. You see Varian weave his way through tents, passing families he's gotten to know over the years. Uh, you know, he knew he had found the right tent when he saw Anya's patch, uh, her patchwork tent at the far end of the pavilion. Um, the sandy desert was slowly being overtaken by lush greenery, a testament to the, a testament, a testament to the collective hard work of those who had made this place their home. Um, his days were spent warding off creatures that threatened the settlement, and he often took on small mercenary jobs for exchange for coin. He had grown used to the life with Mislin by his side. It had been a natural strength for her, for him. You know, her bravery, just her life. You and Mislin could take on the world together. He muttered a joke under his breath about their roles as cell spells. And after all, after all, Mist is in this for the muscle, not the magic. You hear go through your head. And Varian is beside you. And also in front of you. He trudged through this the sea of tents in the fading twilight, his feet sinking into the dewy grass with each step. The stars were usually out in full force, providing him comfort and a sense of security on his solitary nights here. Tonight, however, the sky was strangely cloudy and the stars were dull and seemed to be fewer. His destination was clear, though. As he arrived in front of Anya's tent, without a second thought, he ducked inside. Auntie! It's me, come on in. Varian stepped into the room, taking in the greenery that filled in this every corner. Uh, you know, there are vines and that hang all down from the ceiling and a, gr a patch of grass that goes throughout the whole tent. Trees inside and such. Her chair was made, that she sits in, is made of living vines intertwined in an intricate pattern. And her hands rest atop a brimming, a, gre a green desk brimming with pink flowers. Varian could feel the air around him spark with life, an electric current running beneath her skin. She met his gaze and spoke in a low, soothing voice. Varian. It's good to see you. You are looking well. And you hear, so formal, auntie. Anya smiled at Varian warmly, her eyes twinkling with a family resemblance between them. Her gaze softened, and although she couldn't be sh he couldn't be sure, he thought he saw something like pain flicker through those eyes as if remembering something maybe from her past. She had lost both her children in the wars before she led her families into the desert, but 
she treated all of the children here as her own. He almost thought of her as his mother. She blinked and smiled again, gesturing for him to follow her as she rose from the desk. Would you like to take a walk with me? You may have missed it, but um, today marks the month of celebration of our clan, she said softly. Varian tugged at his collar as his aunt Anya stood. She was adorned in pristine white, a pristine white dress that cascaded around her body, the ornate trim shimmering in the light of the torches that lit the tent. A gown to, simula to symbolize new beginnings, Varian couldn't help but notice the contrast between their clothing. He only wore a simple navy blue tunic and trousers. He felt acutely aware of his lack of formal clothing and accessories and of Anya's beautiful, then of Anya beautiful despite her advanced age. She seemed otherworldly in a sense. He should clean himself more up. He should he should clean himself up more often. He thought as he could be worthy of being seen with her and not being embarrassed and not embarrassing her if, you know, he actually tried. She stepped close to him and spoke softly. Come, young Arbor. We take a walk to the tree, taking his arm and uh, wrapping her arm around his. She pulled and Varian followed closely behind her as they stepped out into the night air. He looked up and saw the clouds dissipating, the midnight sky, no more stars to be seen. And you wake up. Who wakes up? That's a good question. Let's find out. Well, that is a net one. Uh... So is Varian. Well, uh, with the added bolstering of, of a rev spirit from like a few sessions ago, I now have advantage to like roll to a, mm -hmm. wake up as a rev. So, oh no, that's a three. So <laughs> okay, so Varian is definitely waking up today. Yeah, meant to be. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> love it. You wake up, Varian. Um, so first thing that happens is Varian stretches and kind of flexes and he looks around and all around him is just like shedded brown fur. And he's just like, oh, gross. He turned into a bear again, didn't he? In oh, the back of your head, you can feel a rev. Almost a little smug. And Varian just kind of like pulls some hair off of his tongue that just like got stuck to it and is you have no idea how that tastes. Actually, you might have an idea how that tastes. It is your body, but you don't know how I think it tastes and that's way worse. <laughs> Do you sit up? Yeah, uh, with like like with a start, he's just like uh, sit up, engage uh, the core, sitting crisscross applesauce, just kind of looking around the the glade of his bedroom. As you do that, a uh, Lily that you've he's never seen before falls to into his lap. Now that's eerie. I'm tired of things showing up on my chest that you know, aren't mine. I think it's time for coffee. And he like <laughs> bursts up and kind of like looks at the lily, decides better of it, and just like walks out of the room. <laughs> Leave it on the bed. You walk out of the room and you are in, I mean, a Rev's old room. So you're in this tree house. You know it. You've been there. You go down to the kitchen. Uh, a Rev's mother is Ella is already sitting at the table almost um, she looks like she hasn't quite 
maybe gone to bed or hasn't slept well, red rim dies with a cup of tea. So Varian goes and he takes the corner and he like looks into the kitchen and then sees Ella sitting there, eyes go flaring wide and then immediately backs around the corner again and goes. Look, you're avoiding your mother now. No, not really. I'm not, 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 not avoiding anyone. Just think, think I might have to go back to my room. Just hang. It's not. Okay. You you hear a sigh. Sit, Varian. I very sheepishly turn the corner and uh, go and gently take a seat opposite Ella, looking at her from across the, the counter. This is your home, is it not? I mean, it is if you say it is. That's or that's the wrong accent. <laughs> it is if you say it is. Uh, I I know I I may have lived here for all of a, a Rev's life, but it was more of a pretend sort of situation than it was a a real one. So I I don't understand if you don't want me calling it home. She gives you this look that's like. You full. You don't even need to roll insight for this. It's just like she would never make you do that. This is your home. Get yourself something to eat. Are you still on that uh, mostly berries diet from a few years ago, or can I actually get a something a little heartier? She rolls her eyes. He... Pistachio has been making food again, yes. He is not here now because he is old and we let him sleep in. See? Uh, have you eaten? It was, I see... Uh, I mean, I don't mean to pry and like I kind of like make my way around and gently see how much coffee and or tea is left to be had. It's, there's not much. I get what I can and just gently press to digitize it a little bit hotter so it's almost like new and blow on it a little bit. I I don't mean to pry, Ella, but uh, and it might be weird, of course, because I've got the face of your son but uh, try not to picture him right now. Pick, picture a much more handsome tiefling fella. You get you you get a grin. Do do you want to talk about whatever is going on with you? <laughs> she reaches forward and and kind of pats your shoulder. You do not have to do this. Okay, then. And I, <laughs> he goes to turn the corner and starts to walk away. But then he, like, sharply turns on his heel and goes, Gotcha. You don't get to be any diminishing of your feelings any way that you would tell a rev. Now, it may not seem it, but I've lived... Or been around at least quite a lot longer than you. So <laughs> sit on down, kiddo. Tell me oh. what ails you. Were you not there for all of it? Yes, of course, but at the same time, it, being in the same room as somebody doesn't mean that you automatically know how they're feeling about a situation, or does it? I have made bad choices, but these choices lead to things that I love very much, and I do not regret them. But I should. They hurt. 
my life quite a, quite a lot. It, you know, it's fine. It's fine to understand that you've made a poor decision in the past. But to color along the lines of the, 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 the products that those choices bring you with the baggage of the bad choice is to set yourself up for failure, Ella. It's like telling Arev you're going to get him a puppy and then you get him a puppy, but nobody takes care of the puppy. And so eventually you get rid of the puppy. It was doomed to begin with because you're doing lip service. You said, hey, we're going to do a thing. And then it failed to act on it. It You can't look at Arev or at his sister and think to yourself about the bad choice. I do not. It's why I do not regret it. I regret the pain I have caused my wife. I, that's the thing. When did my second son become so wise? In all fairness, I think this is one of the first conversations we've ever had. Just us, that is. And it's not your second son that's so wise. No. <laughs> no. Uh, it's funny that you'd think being the one who's been alive, so to speak, longer than a rev, that I'd be the wise one. But uh, half the time when I've needed counsel, I've turned to him myself. So he is a good boy. An even better man. That does not make you less. Oh, of course. If anything, I'm the better half. But uh, he definitely has a way of sinking into your heart. He is my heart more no more. I'm <laughs> very just sips his caffeinated beverage. <laughs> and you guys eat breakfast quietly, I suppose, waiting for everyone else to uh, join you. Do you guys, uh, when do you guys think you guys, uh, I'm saying you guys a lot, uh, join them? Um, probably not early. I think Damascus sleeps in. And then sleep in. I'm fixing his hair. All right. Uh, if you sleep in, Faisal will probably end up down there before you and make, start making breakfast because chef's not in the kitchen. What? There's no breakfast. Chef is uh, in the kitchen now. Mm-hmm. I think Gilly wakes up pretty early uh, and comes downstairs looking fabulous, obviously, yes. with her new hairdo. Um, yep. You've and, got like a little uh, crown going. <laughs> Do they have mirrors? Would I know that I have? Y- you would have hair? gotten up and there's a mirror in your room. By that okay. point, uh, Talon has like flown away. <laughs> <laughs> so you just wake up with this awesome hairdo. Yeah. The house do this. <laughs> the house Magical do this. druid house. You have uh, no and, clue. <laughs> and if FaZe is working in the kitchen, uh, 
I guess Skilly will go over it and say, well, uh, good morning. Uh, do you need some help? I don't know much about cooking, but I've watched somebody cook quite a bit, uh, so I can probably hold things. You could, if you could, you could just, how about you just eat, because I'm almost done. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very pr- possessive about my kitchens I'm so sorry it really stresses me out when people try to help me <laughs> it sounds healthy all right I'll go eat then <laughs> she starts bringing over the food by the time you sit down and tea so. and all of that and then sits with you good morning did you sleep good you look amazing Thank you. I don't know what happened. Uh, I just woke up like this. It's the magical treehouse. I love this place. It would do the Talon. same thing to Talon. You hear Talon laugh. He's on the top of the fridge, <laughs> just like <laughs> yes, the tree hips. You don't know what he's saying, but yes, yes the tree hips. So, just next to the kitchen, sort of like off the hall, there's this little. Uh, almost alcove. So one one of the windows is like set a little out of the house, and it's like a it's been carved uh hollow with a bunch of cushions and throw cushions, and in the actual wood itself has been like hollowed out and chiseled uh bookshelves. Ooh, so you you just it. you just Reading see very up. uh Varian sort of like resting in this little book nook uh next to the window um the dawn's light kind of over his body his legs trailing just off the edge a book in his hand and he's just kind of like half eyes over towards you and goes no seriously it would do the same thing to Rev's hair he just you know he's kind of balding up there so just to, shh, don't tell him as uh as you say that <laughs> uh Danae is coming down the stairs and goes Good morning, good morning, Barry. Good morning, Denny. But it was a good try. I did hear you, though, say that my son is balding. It's more of a running gag between him and I. Don't, uh, not that he could respond to me or anything, but I like to tease him. <laughs> and he, he's never heard it before, of course, because he was sleeping, but he can hear it now. So, <laughs> sucker. <laughs> She uh, walks by you. She's uh, roll me insight. <laughs> the thing Rev's great at, but very sucks at. Let's go. Oh yeah, that's a nat seven. So grand old nine. Fine. I mean, she just woke up, so you can't say you couldn't say, right? Um, she goes down to the kitchen. You see her go in. Uh, you don't know what goes on in there, but uh, Gilly, you see her grab herself a tea and then leave the room without even like looking at Ella right now. Uh, eventually, you begin to hear these little pitter patters getting louder in your direction, Arev or Varian, as you get tackled by Raybella. My night. I just give her a hug and like gently tossle her hair a little bit and kind of go cough and go. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'm gonna roll perception for her. We're gonna see if she or insight for her. We'll see if she figures it out. Can I roll deception? You can roll deception. Okay. Sweet. What'd you get? I got a twenty-seven. <laughs> She got a four. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the reason Varian has been able to get out of so much shit is because he is an excellent liar. You, She looks at you and she goes, good morning. And she has your cheeks in her hand and she squishes them a little bit. I go like I, I still have like a, a, a little bowl of like mixed berries and nuts. And I just kind of like put some more in my mouth and go, good morning. <laughs> Do not talk with your mouth full. It is rude. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And then she sticks her hand into your bowl and takes some. And begins to eat and just sit with you. And pat her head. And then just go, go back to reading my book in silence. <laughs> You're not going to read to me? <laughs> okay. Uh, so Varian <laughs> is going to... If you'll let him try to put on a performance... Go for it. Because he is... 27 deception gonna last. Give me a performance <laughs> check. Uh, cause he's, uh, he is sweating right now. That might also just be his actor. But, <laughs> um, so he's reading, uh, a book and he goes, <clears throat> on deforestation in the cities, uh, it's uh, every individual's response uh, to act, and it is very important to understand that uh, while uh, fires and natural occurrences are very important, the uh, not to disturb the wilderness that is in the area, uh, as they are used to such natural disasters and will instead just find new places to abide. Uh, if that does happen to be your residence, just understand that they are all protected under the Natural uh, City Law Ordinance 15A Part 3, Subsection 2. And he, he reads for a little bit. Uh, I got a What'd 20. I got a 23. A 23. Okay, let me roll this. <laughs> Which is why I was doing that without his accent. <laughs> <laughs> one sec, one sec, one sec. Let me roll for her. Did he have an advantage because he was reading something boring that she wouldn't want to listen to for very long? I am. Um, I'm. That would be nice. Thank you, Kara. What did you roll? Because <laughs> she she got a twenty three for this one. I got oh. a twenty three. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> is you this say a, that. Is this a beats it beats it? This is a. Oh, cause she's rolling. Okay. Uh, you rolled deception. I... She rolled insight. You guys basically, you say that she, her eyes immediately gloss over. She looks at you like something's not right. And she oh, goes, No, I, I, I rolled performance, not you deception. You rolled performance. Okay. You rolled if performance. I, if I rolled deception, I got a 27. She, you start talking and she, uh, and she goes, This is okay. I'm going to go eat something good. And then walks away. Got it. And as that happens, uh, Roy is coming down the stairs and goes, it's a good try. Mm -hmm. He rolls his eyes and continues down the stairs. <laughs> he knows. Varian in his head to a rev in the back goes, I swear to you, this is way harder than it looks. I am freaking trying to keep your face. Uh, roll me. Roll me in it. Uh, roll me a, let's see, uh, a charisma check to see if he can, if a rev can answer you. Ooh. How much is his will Ooh. going to be imposed here to talk back? Uh, who's charisma? Mine or his? His. Uh, da, 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 da. that requires another press of a button and my internet speeds. Please hold. Canadian internet speeds are a wonder. Yep. Um, that would be so a Rebs charisma score. So just straight charisma plus what I ruled would be a twelve. Broken. What would he say in in broken like common? Um. I think, like, if he would only get, like, a couple words through, then he would just try to get across, like, I know. Just, like, the, the the vague sense of, like, comfort. Like, like it's okay. Like, I, You're doing I know. your best. You're doing yeah. your best, buddy. It, it, it's like, 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 like if anything, daddy. yeah, <laughs> Varian would, like, feel this, like, gentle, like, hand on his shoulder and kind of like that you know like the the encouraging mm -hmm. sort of like thumb right like the it's okay like i know 
You got this. You got this. Marion um, just keeps reading the ordinances of the local <laughs> law. As you're as you're reading, there's like a knock at the front door. Um, it's answered by Danae and uh, Nimbus is there. I have a message for a uh, rev. I will take it. Our rev is reading. <laughs> she takes the uh, the message for you, and it comes back hands it to you and goes, I mean, you can give it to him whenever he awakes. And I, like, take my finger and just open it. That works as well. And she <laughs> she goes and sits down in her, in her chair. Uh, it is, it's a reply from Callum. Oh. And it, it says, uh, I'll meet you in Thon. Stay safe. I fold it up and put it in a pocket. Uh, let me just roll something. Uh, is our, our okay with a I okay? I rolled a nat twenty with a nat twenty for your for that charisma check. What is a rev feeling when he gets that message? Because he is aware of it. Um, it's. It'd actually be like probably like a little uncomfortable for Varian because Varian's been mostly in control, right? For like mm -hmm. this whole time until recently. Um, and weirdly, after reading that message, Varian just kind of like his body feels like warm and kind of like he's like, "Why am I sweating? I don't. <laughs> what's that's odd. I don't know. It's just it's just a letter." And like kind of like puts it down, but. A rev is like so flustered that it's like it almost makes Varian lose his grip on the body. <laughs> There's a second where you, where a Varian is like, I don't, I don't feel so good. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm like, like a rev. I might have been able to grab control there with a nat twenty. Oh, it, uh -huh. it was close. It was close. It was very very close. Uh, you know, you know what they say the, about the power of love. It's a curious thing. Uh, power of the... Dan, are you doing Hi. anything or are you just sleeping in? Yes. So I think around this point, Damascus would have gotten up, fixed himself up, made himself presentable, and he'll join, uh, follow the smell of delicious cooking down into the kitchen. Uh, he'll join people at the table. Uh, Good morning. Morning, darling. And he will go over and try and give her a kiss. How does she Put respond? Cheek out. Yeah, I'll give her a kiss on the cheek. Where'd you end up spending that last night, darling? I slept beside you when I got back. I just also sleep less than you because for some ungodly reason, you sleep like 12 hours a day. I require my beauty rest. What can I say? We, we ain't all as naturally gorgeous as you are. Some of us have to work at it. Stop. <laughs> uh, where'd you head out to? Outside. Just clear your head. You roll me inside. I'd love to roll inside. I love rolling dice. What's what's her deception? I will tell you in a second. Her deception is nine. My insight is plus eight for a total of. Dirty 20. She rolled 27. That's, that's you believe better her. than mine. Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, I was angry that you went to go and see Bella, but that's okay. I'm over it. I know you love me. He eyes her suspiciously for a second because this seems odd. Um, she smiles at you. Like a big smile. All right. And he'll... Um, is everybody else still at the table? I mean, it rubs in his nook, and Danae is Perfect. outside. 
but okay. everyone else is in there. Okay. Winter's there too. Winter's there, yeah. He okay. ha- he has he came down and he's like silent. Apparently he's not a morning person today. Normally he's okay, but today he I guess he actually slept. Hmm. He smelled like that. <laughs> um I will just sit down and I'll pull out the flower that I got. And just kind of put it on the table. That's one more ingredient down. So far, so good. Oh, she gave it to you. Yeah. I can be very persuasive when I need to be. And she realized it was for the best of, you know, existence. So, still working on getting the tear. We'll have to figure out a way to make her cry for that, but... um... I'll make her cry! (laughs) <laughs> All right, now. Be nice. I ain't being nice. No, you're being... It's for humanity! <laughs> it's for existence! All right. can argue Just... with that. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I can't. I mean, somebody's gonna have to do it at some point, and I don't know if I got it in me. Let me tell her. Let me, let me, Just let me... I just wanna have to talk with her. So... That's so a lot more. This is a lot more <laughs> like Faisa normally is very like, I'll do it, it's fine. But this is a little <laughs> bit more like a little bit more of Otman there. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. I got it. Okay. Um, hopefully that won't be necessary, but if it does, unleashing the fury of Faisa is certainly an option, unless. Uh, look at Gilly and Winter. Anyone else has a bright idea? I try to avoid making girls cry whenever possible. It's like a yeah. personal motto. This is the problem so I keep bumping sweet. up against. <laughs> I think I really like you, Gilly. Oh, thanks, Dom. I like you too. <laughs> yes. Did you see my message? Yes, I did, and I will okay. totally let you do that. Thank One you. thing. Intriguing. Yeah. So you guys, I'll, is you got okay, your I'll, thing? I'll put it back in the the little thing, and just go. All right. Well, now we just need to find a basilisk and figure out a way to make the god cry. Should be easy enough. In the special totally tree, easy enough. And 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 convince the special tree. But our friend. Our tree ant friend said all we have to do is prove ourselves worthy, which, I mean, all it's got to do is meet us, and I'm sure I could convince that I'm worthy. Damascus does not suffer from imposter syndrome. No, he does not. <laughs> he really believes that he is the hero. Um, mm-hmm. At this point, as you guys are talking, uh, Varian, you see this. Uh, you see Danae finish her coffee, place it down on the counter, or like finish her coffee, get up, go and put it down on the counter, and then um, just as where he's placed, you see her lean into, uh, into Roy, and whisper something in his ear, and then head outside. And Roy looks at Raybella eating, and Faza, Faza giving her like putting more food on her plate, and he goes, and he just nods and heads out quietly as well after Danae. Uh, what do you do? So, <clears throat> and as I've been sitting in this nook since before everybody got here and Damascus comes in and starts getting everybody's attention and everybody seems to be sort of distracted and looking at their food. Um, he's no longer in the window. Or at least that's how here. it would look. What did you do? You... I quietly, subtly, if you will, cast Aha. greater invisibility. Oh, shit. Greater invisibility, too. And we pulling no punches. No, I'm not fucking around. I want to know what's going on. And um, I slink out of the window and I follow Danae and Roy. They uh, walk away from the house a little bit. 
find somewhere that's uh, secluded. There's no one around. And and she uh, turns around and just gives him a smack upside the head. And you see him wince. Go, okay, I, I understand that I... Un- you know, I know, I know it has been hard for you. I understand that. Growing up with your parents and knowing that Arev is your brother and all of this. But it was not your... It was not your... And he goes, I know. I apologize. I lost my temper. It's not why I called you out here. I was out and uh, getting the current batch of people across the border. There was a girl with them, with very, very skinny, uh, purple tiefling. Uh, she did not make it far. She was captured and um, taken away. We were ambushed at one point, and it took a lot to get us out of there, and I could not save her. But the guards... She looks at... She gives Roy a look. And uh, roll me insight. He sucks so much at this. <laughs> so uh, much. That's a, a nine. A nine. It's quiet for a moment. Nothing happens. He goes... You think it was her? Yes, I think it was her. The guards looked very much like the ones that worked for your mother. And you hear, uh, you see his fifth clench into just pure rage for a second there, and then he breaks and he goes, she got out? She's alive? I cannot say. She did not look anything like what you remember her to look like. She was almost skeletal. I'm sorry. I lost her. And there's this, like, really tense moment between them as they stare at each other. I have to go back to Thon. And she nods. What are you doing during this time? So, like, I know that I'm invisible, but I I still probably would have done my best to, like, try and hide behind something just on the off chance like Mm -hmm. that they have some sort of sense or uh, ability that I'm not familiar with Um, I think Varian's just trying to like piece together the information because he maybe it was just me and I I, I missed some of the, the details but like Am I correct in assuming that they, the the guards abducted the sick and skeletal eldest druid? No. Or they they think it's they abducted a rev's daughter. No. Do you want to roll me? Roll me a history check. Because yeah, purple, purple tiefling. Oh my gosh! No, I am I'm worse than Dan today. That's a nat one. Oh no! Oh no! At least I think it's a nat one. 
yeah, the 20 side is just stars. This is a one, like clearly. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment where Roy, Roy kind of shakes a little bit, and then there's uh, you. I mean, you've seen Roy multiple times growing up. He has always been a pompous dick, but there's a tear that rolls down his face as he has to wipe it away, and Danae steps in and hugs him. Oh. You will get her. Yeah, you will oh. get her back. It's Raybella's mother. Yeah. Shit. Okay. She has been torturing her, I suppose. She has not been feeding her if she is that thing. She is strong if she has survived this long and escaped on top of all of that. What else does your mother have to keep you online? And Roy's nodding, and your mother is fully comforting him, like, like he's her kid, almost in a sense. Like he's he's part of her family. You will keep Raybella for me, yes. Of course, I will keep Raybella for you. She will be safe. I I swear it. I swear on my life. And uh, it takes him a little bit longer, and he collects himself. This mask of just snotty brat nose aristocrat comes back on, and he heads back to the the house. Takes Danae a little bit longer. She's composing herself, and she's going to head back as well. Is there anything that you would like to do? No, I would just wanted to figure out what's going on. I don't want to make myself known. Yeah. So, um, I will just stay out of the way. Uh, and I guess stay invisible, but I will follow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, wait. Greater invisibility only lasts up to one minute. Oh, you're hiding behind a goddamn tree. Yeah. So, uh, I swear that spell lasted longer. That's wild. Okay. Invisibility lasts an hour, but that one only lasts a minute because you can cast spells while you're in it. That sucks. It uh... seems, seems like inferior invisibility to me. That's <laughs> right? not greater at all. Like... Why would they make it cast one minute? Um, great. Okay. Uh, so I guess I get discovered. It will. Are you hiding? I. I yes. Do you want to roll me a stealth check? Yes. Again, something that I suck at, but I'd love to. Oh, uh, okay, sweet. Never mind. Dirty 20. 19 plus 1. Your mother does not see you with only having a 19 with that. And she composes herself and turns back to go back to the house. So, uh, if I'm not seen, then I think... Uh, is there like like a rope ladder or something nearby like something that like would connect like the tree house to like a like a lower deck or are some you other trying to the... break into your own your old room no uh more just like i i want it to seem like i'm like coming back to the house coming back to the house uh, you could go around the back and say you're out, out out that way. They went out the front. Then, yeah, like, I, I kind of want to, like, make myself known, but make it look like I, I wasn't just, like, in the same space they were while they were talking. 
as you as you are you you get for far enough away she's a little bit farther behind you you're kind of like at the side of the house by then uh more around like where the falcon area is and as you do that you hear are you snooping and nimbus is beside you so i don't know what you've heard but normally what the, the fuck is this the polite thing to say when you're going to approach somebody is to at least first say what's up motherfucker what's up motherfucker what's with your voice Wait, this is the first... Oh, <laughs> hi. Hello. So, uh... <laughs> hi, hello. Funny story. Um, this body? Not mine. But uh, but you could probably figure that one out. Uh, so, my name is Varian. Uh, I kind of share a body with the Lord Lit here. So, don't... Uh... He knows about it, though. I'm I'm sorry. Well, hang, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll for a second here. Is there anything you're saying to him in this time? Do you raise all these birds yourself? They're quite pretty. That one over there reminds me of a bird that my uh, pal had. Prettier though. Does she have a name? Is she for sale? No, my birds are not for sale. But that one is not mine. It's Trixie, which I would assume you would recognize. Trixie's here. Wait. Trixie's out. Callum's here. Where's Callum? You got... <laughs> You're fucking with him so hard. <laughs> Not here. He gave you a message. What's wrong with you right now? Uh, literally nothing. Other than the fact that I... We've never... Wait, no, I was... You're really that... fucking with me. No, and hang on. I am is... not Wait, drunk no, enough to is... fall for it this time. Uh... Cirrus. No, not Cirrus. Uh, Cumulus. No. Uh, trying to think. Yeah, let's What's just the... go through all the fucking clouds, okay? <laughs> you know what my name is. My parents were dicks. <laughs> Side note, I'm just impressed that I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes, name is. Okay, so I, I'm not trying to fuck with you. It's actually a thing. Oh, who the What's fuck are what? You, then? No, no, no! I, I just said my name is Varian. Jesus! Wait, listen. No, this is not. This Keep is up. why. How is this a thing? And why have you never spoken then? That's a long and complicated story that we should share a drink over. But in the meantime, just suffice it to say, I'm here. He's not. I'm fun. He's not. It's just sort of the way things go. <laughs> uh, you. There's a slight kind of like quirk to his lips as he's trying really hard not to laugh at this um all right you've been here the whole time yeah but i mean all right fine I, what's something that you know about me that only we know he gets this like big devilish grin on his face and it's like you would it almost for a second like never it, it would look like he sees like sharp tiefling teeth instead of like a rev's normal like human teeth and he just goes do you really want me to talk about that time when you were 14 and you went behind the shed and you went and got your dad's pitchfork to go and then the bottle of whiskey and then we, you went Shut to the up. edge of no it's cool you've been here the whole time <laughs> I've been here the whole time gotta say though you had some real fucking stones on you I'd I've never seen somebody throw something that f oh, and right in front of her too. I'm What's surprised up? she It's good to meet you. It's good to meet you too. That's fucking weird. For real though, any points at um uh what did you name it? The sun sundrop? Sundew? Sundew. Sun uh sunflower. Sunflower. He points at sunflower, he goes, For real though, she's please tell me she's for sale. Or wait, no. Do we? Do you work for a rev? Does that mean that she's a revs? Don't you touch my bird? Is it? A don't you bird? touch my bird? No, Nimbus. it's my bird. No, see, now I was fucking with you, but don't you be fucking with me. No, she's my bird. She's not technically supposed to exist. 
she's illegal. Which would make her a Rev's problem, and therefore a Rev's bird, if you're found out. Now, wouldn't it? And he knows. I've got, I've got a bit of a mouth. I know he knows, but like the officials could know, and I've got a bit of a mouth. Are you threatening me? No, I'm just saying that she'd deserve a fantastic home, and while you'll take care of her, I just want to fly. You want to fly on my bird? Well, when she gets bigger, of course. She's, a, she's not but a baby now. Can I feed her? Yes, you can feed her. And he goes yes. over and he gets some <laughs> he gets some seeds to put in your hand. And, and maybe so, you can go on a, fl- a flight with her. Uh, Varian, like, rolls up his, like, sleeves. And this is where Nimbus, like, actually gets a, a real clue that Varian is a little bit different than Arev. Because, like, Arev will do what's needed and he has no issues getting dirty he he likes to like get in and accomplish any task that needs to be accomplished but he still very much has his goals and ideals and he's trying he's trying to accomplish something right varian just gets into the 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 aviary and he's like wading through the, the he's like climbing up the hay bales he's like getting covered in soot and there's like straw and everything sticking to his face his arms are just getting up and he like gets up and he's like get interacting with the bird and like this like I could have called her for you to you and but you're right you are definitely not a rev you hear from behind you and he just like he's like standing there like holding on just below like the like the nest or roost and he's like looking back down from the hay bales and he flashes him a grin and he goes no that I certainly am not. And that's kind of all he has to you say. You guys you guys spend some time feeding the bird. You get to play with her. Uh he'll let you he teaches you kind of almost how to be like how to catch her when she lands without getting like a whole bunch of scratches all over you. And uh you have a good time. Every now and then Trixie looks over at you, flies over and pecks at your head a little bit. Like, she knows that you're not a Rev, but you look like a Rev, but you are, you should be a Rev. And, and then when, every now and then she'll, like, lean into you and rub her head on you and then be like, no, peck, peck. Uh, he, he, like, looks up and, like, as as she's pecking, he goes, ah, Trixie, no, th- look, if I could turn into a bird, I would. I just, I, I promise you, uh, next time he's in control, I'll get him to fly around with you a little bit, just... I, I don't have the same set of skills. She's looking at you. You can see her turn her head one way, turn her head the next, ruffle her feathers, and then fly away. Uh, and uh, eventually you guys all head back into the house together? collect uh what are the plans for today as you go back in like uh roy is is ready to go and is making it known that he is unpleased that you guys are all just sitting around i go and i stand next to him and i go no you're right they are taking a bit of a their sweet time aren't they you're not my knight. <laughs> no, sweet dove, I'm not. I'm sorry. Lie to me? You hurt no. the trees? And you lied to me? Oh, well, you're in trouble now. <laughs> in all fairness, I didn't actually lie. Because all I did was respond. And you asked me to read to you, and I read. With stupid voices? Were they stupid? I thought they were quite convincing. You see her mouth just kind of fall open and goes, You're a bad person. She turns around and walks away. (laughs) And Binet scoops her up and goes, Enough, enough. We don't we make people things. feel bad. He liked me. I, I, I turn to Roy and I, I go, you know, she's not half wrong. I am sometimes quite the bad person, but I'd prefer if she didn't think it. 
You hurt the trees, apparently. They had it coming. Now, are we ready to go? <laughs> I suppose we can get on the route. We're in a hurry, is it? No, yeah, there's time for return. another mom saving so mission. All right. Call us the mom savers. No. Do we. Gone. Oh, Marian, you said ca- call us the mom savers. I was like, no, please no. <laughs> that's not a great name, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that. not a name that I really want to go by. I mean, we've got a great track record so far. I, I mean, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> I mean, we saved my dad, not my mom, but still. The parents saved us. I mean, technically, parental protectors. We left behind Bells, who saved your mom. See, so really, parental protectors. It ain't bad. So both parents. The parent trip is that anything? I think that's a story (laughs) I heard once about (laughs) the redheaded girl. Can't remember. Two sisters, I think. They looked alike? I read a book. You know that one. That might have been the same person, actually. It was quite confusing in the retelling. (laughs) (laughs) It was a thin book. It wasn't like that involved. I was going to say, it's still... It's a novella? Real impressive. It's a novella that you couldn't read a few months ago. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know who was teaching me, but I remember somebody taught me, and it worked pretty good, I think. But I also know, like, a couple different languages, so I don't think it's that hard. Fair enough. Yeah. You, you, you've also got a new, uh, a new hand on the wheel, so to speak. So perhaps you might have been guided another gift. Perhaps a gift of Maybe, language. Because it was really easy. Well, I mean, you don't like apples. Maybe now you can read. It's a bit of a sour trade if you catch my drift, but... Yeah, they kind of are a little sour now. I'm not a huge fan. Hmm. They're just apples. You try the red ones. I give. I have the ones that Damascus gives me. Are they the red ones? There are Did different kinds that? of apples. Yes. Oh, darling. Of course they are. I'm sure we'll be able to pick up some some golden delicious or something when we get to Thon. Yellow apples? Yellow apples. I mean, more green than yellow, but greeny yellow. Green apples are not ready. I've even heard of blue apples. What the fuck are we talking about now? (laughs) Apples? You're lying to me. Varian! No, it's being dead serious. I really like when you're here, but you you stop fucking with me. You know I don't have that much life experience. (laughs) <laughs> do, do you know what's frustrating? And I, I turned to Carol. You know what's frustrating? I might be the new one to the group other than you, uh, but even when I tell the truth, they think I'm not telling them the truth. It's because you don't tell it that often. Yeah, I, I can't imagine why that's the case. We still love you, but you don't tell it that often. No, you see, it, you know, it's quite funny, but I'm entirely honest. In fact, it's the Are dishonest you? ones you want to watch out for. <laughs> Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> because I mean, what? what's I? He makes some good points, and she goes over I... and she gives Varian a hug. Thank you. I'm glad you're back. Now, don't get me started on the pink apples. Stop <laughs> for real, though. No, for real, though. It's like I, I'm gonna. I James, for real, there you. are pink apples. Like I've seen really? those actually. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I'll get batch for those. The blue I made okay. up, but it's a fantasy world. So, like, that's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who knows? Google says that blue apples are real, too. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> They're called the blue Permians. Oh, my gosh. I gotta look these up. Perfect. I didn't lie. <laughs> Even oh, when I did lie. Sometimes. The truth. Blue is when they're not right. Never mind. Oh, well, That's I so just, cool, like, though. You could probably yeah. turn them into, like, a blue jam. I don't know if the insides are blue. It might just be the skin. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, is the insides of a red apple red? Yeah. Um, Anywho. Uh, we digress. 
<laughs> most important most conversation of the day. This is the going. most important conversation we have ever had. <laughs> uh, uh, what yeah, about? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you got any ideas on how we can make Beloth cry? I told you I could do it. Without getting a phase of sm- smited, smoked, smoked, smitten? I th- I am smitten with no, you. Damascus. Oh, darling. I thought you would never ask. And I literally pull a scroll out of my bag of holding and just, and like, <laughs> it falls open. He goes, ways to make Beloth cry. Uh, do you want re- reason one? Uh, I've got about 243 here. So which one do you want? I uh, want all of them. And I think you are my new favorite person. Damascus, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm breaking up with you for Varian. Awkward. <laughs> I mean, no, see, uh, about reason 43 here was have Beloth believe she's the reason that Damascus and Faisal broke up, have Faisal move on, pretend, and then have them get back together and in fact get married when Beloth thought everything was actually going to be fine. So, um, because that, that she, be she would like, one. she would like have a moment of like belief and relief and she'd think everything was fine and you two would actually get back together, but then it was all just, you know, a pageant, you see. Right. And uh, at the end of the day... Do you want to be my uh, new boyfriend? <laughs> doesn't he have that position covered? Yeah, but if we're going to do that one... I mean, she, she might believe it, but uh, n- n- not as long as I, 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 I'm in here, though. I think that's... If we I'm a rev, that, a might a, that, might, that might give a rev uh, the ick. I mean, perhaps. Uh, mm. Why would he give a rev the ick? <laughs> Wait, what's wrong with me? <laughs> You just, just never know, love. It's, I just it's personal preferences. I just can't say for loves peaches. It's true. I think it's it's more of a consent issue. Yeah, he's I mean, also he's just a very big fan of body. That's why we get him in on the plan. I am so offended with the ick. What? And she walks away. <laughs> I was just the trying ick. to say that he's of a knightly persuasion, so to speak. Noble. Tell that to his daughter. <laughs> it's, it's a more recent thing. Also, uh-huh. it's easy to get confused in your younger years. The hormones and all that. Wait, he likes Baskus men? nods. I mean, I know he likes men, but he likes men men now? Just like all that? That's it? I mean, You hear from, not... like, across the room. And one of Arev's mothers is just like, Okay. Varian kind of like looks over. He puts his head up. It's like, I, just for the record, I am not him. I can't say for sure. I just, I, I get I, ideas. Get in his head, mate. You live in his brain. If anybody's going to know, <laughs> yeah, no, he no, lives no, in no, his no. body. You're better than Elsa. The brains are separate. I, listen, I'm not. Listen, just, just, shh, just bring it, reel it in, or, <laughs> and you, Winter, kind of puts an arm around you, just. Stop putting your foot in your mouth. I've learned that when you say less, it's probably better. Varian looks uh, up at Winter and goes, "Okay." He, <laughs> well, I lean over he to Faza. Gives you... Now this is this is the kind of thing mm-hmm. that that a rev. I lean over to Faza and go, "Now this is exactly the kind of thing that a rev is into, which is why I can pretend <laughs> to be your boyfriend would work." Oh my god, that's really cute. I mean, right? But it's not winter, though, right? Like, not into winter? Eh. Not into winter, right, right, Varian? No, that's more my speed. And then he realizes (laughs) what he says, and he's like... (laughs) Hey. You think I'm pretty? I try to, like... He pulls you into him. (laughs) Think I'm pretty? Brain short circuits. Gilly, should we give him the room? This party is so interesting. <laughs> uh, you, he just kind of like scratches your head for a second and then uh, gives you a, to- a kiss on the top of it and he'll walk away. You know, I'm pretty sure he's seen a rev naked. I have, yes. <laughs> that's awkward for me. I mean, it wasn't bad to look at. <laughs> a very end. 
taps around the shoulder and goes, I think that's our cue. <laughs> and like, he begins to walk out. Let's go save a mom. <laughs> You'll save and a mom. As, as you're walking out, uh, Damascus, he, Winter steps up beside you and goes, I'm really starting to enjoy making people uncomfortable. Yeah. Ain't it fun? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm starting it's, to understand. One of the best things. As long as it's all in good fun and ain't anybody getting hurt in the long run, knock yourself out. And if it's very in that do it twice as much. <laughs> I don't feel as bad, I'm going to say. Uh, and then they'll head out with you. Uh, Roy takes a minute and hangs back and kneels down to Raybella. And you see him, like, take her into his arms and give her a hug and a kiss and, like, and and start talking to her in Druidic, telling her that he's going to be back and everything's going to be okay. You're going to be staying with your aunties for a little bit. and But, but you like Auntie Danae, so... Everything's going to be fine. It's a big sleepover, and he'll be back in in a few days for her. And uh, he gives her a big kiss on the head. She hugs him. She's like, okay, I know you ha- I-, I know you have to go, but I will be here when you get back. And I'm going to grow lots of flowers because there's not enough around the tree. And uh, he lingers just a little bit too long. Hmm? Oh, just let me know when you're about to leave Raybella in the scene, because I just want to add something in the end. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Uh, he lingers just a little bit too long, really struggling with just leaving his <laughs> daughter. But we'll get up and be like, and uh, makes her a flower that he puts in her hair. And she goes, I like these ones, thank you. And uh, he walks out and then he's all pissy pants as per normal. What do you do? You want to go first, Damascus? Sure. Uh, I'll go up to Raybella. Is she wearing my hat? She is not right now. Oh, I will pat her on the head and just go. You take care of my hat for me, all right? We'll be back soon enough. Try not to... uh, Turn into anything too scary for your aunts. <laughs> I'm going to be purple later. Purple with white hair and green eyes, but the whole thing is going to be green and I'm going to look like a frog. You're going to be a, a adorable frog. I guarantee you, it. All right. You hold on to that. You keep it safe for me till I get back, all right? It will be very safe. I am very protective of my stuff, as she... You remember her with her ripped cloak? Mm-hmm. I just... All right. You take care of it. And I mess her hair up a little bit. Mm. See you later, darling. And okay, bye. Head out. And what I will open up my little... I'll open up my little chocolate box for her. <gasps> One for the right, just Daddy, one, because okay. I need some. Don't tell that. And oh, she takes, yeah. she takes the biggest chocolate. It's fine. <laughs> I, you're going to come back to play with me, right? We could go swimming. Of course. I, I get bored if I can play with you. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. And she gives you. She, there's a minute where she pauses. She looks around and she tackles you and gives you a big hug. Mm-hmm. I will miss you. What would you like to do? So, Varian has left the building with Mm -hmm. Roy. um, But there is a moment just like as everybody sort of like she's got the chocolate, she's munching it, that this sort of like spectral pale cyanish blue hand that the edges just sort of seem to sparkle and rim almost like an electric current um carrying a small piece of parchment through the air and just in front of Raybella lays it at her feet before the hand waves and vanishes Hmm. she makes all the parchment what is it (laughs) It's it's no she can read common. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it reads and it says, "Princess, I don't know 
what mornings I will wake up as myself. But it's important for you to know that if it's not me, then the person who is looking after my body does his best to protect me and keep me safe. And I trust him. I'm asking that you trust him too, because if he protects me, that means he's making sure that I can come back and be there for you at a later date. Remember to give him time. Signed with all the love in the world, your knight. There's a moment, this is off screen, nobody sees this, where she reads this and looks at it and there's a pause and then out of the treehouse comes these tiny little feet as she goes, wait, wait, the imposter. <laughs> he turns and he just looks back. She runs up to you. She goes, she makes a little, uh, it's a little daisy. And she goes, please give this to my knight. And she hands it to you. First level and then one. She, she makes um, a black-eyed dahlia, which is kind of like the evil-looking daisy. And she hands this in. And this one is for you. Well, this one's um, way better than the other one. You clearly have a new favorite. And... And you will protect my knight. And then she looks at you and there's like a little hesitation. She goes, and then she hugs you. I hug her back and I go, with every fiber of my being, I will protect him, I swear. And you will protect yourself and come back. Because apparently you're a nice person, even if you hurt the trees be fair that's a story that i need to share with you but they kind of hurt me first because you didn't talk to them right (laughs) sure we'll go with that one for now okay but we'll see you later princess i swear okay bye no not bye see you later and then there's a minute and she looks at you, and then this big grin breaks out, and she goes, okay, see you later. <laughs> and she runs back to the house. And I think that's where we'll take our five-minute break. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm stuck. Hi, everybody. We are back from our break. Um... So, you guys are beginning to travel through uh, the small amount of forest to get to Thawne. Bah, bah. And as you are traveling, uh, everyone give me perception checks. Which First one is not going to curse me? Okay. Okay. Not great. Twelve. Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen. With a twelve, with a ten, this is a very peaceful journey. Which is rare. There's always normally something. With the twelve, you're a little uneasy. This is you're in the jungle. There's this is very quiet for it. With an eighteen. Tavascus, you feel a little bit you feel a little bit tense. This is uh there should be birds calling. There should be it's very deserted. Uh, anyone else notice that it's it's quiet? Too quiet. <laughs> Now that you say it, aren't there supposed to be like birds and shit in the forest? Uh, Rev, you uh, never mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can ask me most of the same questions. I've been there I mean, for like. You yeah, don't. We do. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Do you know anything about why this forest is supposed to be loud, right? With, like, birds and rustling, I don't know, 
monkeys in the treetops or whatever. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's what a forest is, and a jungle is got all kinds of wildlife. But would you say, and he like looks around, would you call this a forest? I'd call it more of a copse. Maybe like a... a, a copse, the thing a, that arrests you when you've been panhandling too long? No, like a copse, like a brace of trees. Do you seriously? You're supposed... Aren't you the eloquence bard? <laughs> come from a city. I, I don't write about cops. And... Okay. This is very interesting. Okay. You uh, are right. Bri- it is quieter. Oh, Brian, I forgot you were here, right? You. He isn't, he isn't like the worst mood right now. And he just looks at you mm-hmm. and goes, you are probably the worst bard I have ever met. You must not have met very many then. Oh, I have met many. But you have heard of him. No, I have not. <laughs> but well, you, I said worst the, bard I have ever show. met, not heard of. But you have met me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I okay. Listen, right. you you are not feeling with me. You are not feeling me with like confidence and um if we could not burst in looking for my wife that would be amazing because i do not want to lose her and i don't think you know how to be stealthy i can be he's not looking at you stealthy all. what i need to i don't believe it I, not uh, even a little bit if it helps you no i can't be stealthy for shit so uh you may as well if you got any sort of a bark or anything i can just sort of like uh Maybe like a that that a duck walked on some sort of d- duck bark some, to tape my mouth. It's like a duck tape from my from my mouth. Something to to stop the senseless blathering. I I see. I know I do it. I you know I do it. I can, I'm not going to stop. So if you get, do you have a way to actually get it to stop? Because I can't have it, actually have it stop from behind so you. you have... Winter's hand just comes around and clamps down <laughs> on your mouth. <laughs> I... <laughs> and he leans down into your ears and goes, "Quiet." <laughs> that's that's what I thought. Good boy. It just needs to be gently domed. Oh my! And he lets go. Let's see. I mean, it's the easiest way to do it. That, it's a neat trick. It was real impressive, actually. <laughs> What's well, not? What are we talking about? about? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> we were not talking. Uh, speaking of of your wife, Roy. Do we know where she might be being held? Is there a not. destination we're heading to? No, we are ho- we are heading home. We are heading home, and I'm going to see if I can find where she is. All right, just checking. I don't know if there's a druid jail or some. There's not a druid jail. She would not be in it. Listen. Yeah. The tieflings that we have been taking out of here. There's a story. um, A very old one where. When purple tieflings came along, they. um, They did not have souls. They were not created of. Belos. And the other gods, they were created by something else and. um, Were given them later. My mother has taken this very literally, and uh, it turns out she can banish them from people. The soul? The soul? Mm. Where is she banishing them to? Wherever they came from. Uh, Back into the big glowy ball thing? They are not from here, is uh, is what the idea is. And when they, when that happens, they turn feral. They begin to, uh, they eventually begin to decay. Do they, by any chance, look anything like 
I'm going to show him the, I'm going to use silent image to show him what the crowd of the, the zombie things that attacked the king's carriage way he back looks, in. Do you want to give me an insight I on him when you it. show him this? Anyone? I, oh. You can try again. I'm always willing for you to try. I, I, I was going a step further here. Um, what about the gaunt ones? Ooh. Can show them both. I will silent image that minor illusion the other. He looks at them both uh, with your insight. What did it? What did we get? Twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. Uh, with your insight. Um. The gaunt ones. He looks at that like, what the fuck is that? The that's a wizard thing. The uh, uh, zombies that you fought before, the like vampire esque zombies. Mm-hmm. He looks at them and he goes, "I don't. It is very similar. I don't understand. Does does it spread?" I was wondering the same thing because they ain't tieflings. Oh. I I have only seen what she has been doing to them. And uh it is it's very similar. I turn to the group. If they're left without a soul, there's like a gaping hole inside them. A vacuum. Vacuums love being filled. What if they're taking little bits of souls from other people when they attack them? Or trying now, to, at least. <clears throat> trying to. I don't mean to be a bit of a worry wart, Damascus. You know, uh, sell it short or or anything. But uh, just humor me on this idea, but um, you said a vacuum liked being filled, right? As a rule. So picture for a second, you have something physically here on our plane that's not technically supposed to be here. Uh So if you created a vacuum, would it take something from here or would it take something from somewhere it was supposed to be or somewhere adjacent because it because it's inside of it i'm saying I, i'm gonna spell it out for you um what if these vacuumous souls um are sucking up just a teeny bit of that creation of our loving dark princess tamina there and they're Man. bringing it a bit of that chaos through, but their 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 bodies can't handle it, and it drives them mad. She you, no. You're thinking that they're connected to her plane of creation. Where has she been locked away all this time? Is I'm that where they're from? What so if they're from, from somewhere here? else? No, it's the souls. Yeah. Maybe that's where the souls came from. What I'm that thinking. Point. Is that perhaps with Tamina banished, that it left it, it it that left a vacuum, and the best way to uh the best way to sort sort of resummon the presence of a, a of a god uh, would be for there to be a people to worship said god. There's. There's no worship in these people. They are not people anymore. No, but I'm saying that in a... Um, I'm you saying that the, the my purple... My is the reason for her return? No! I, I would not put it past them. It's... 
What are you thinking? Yes, it... Very unlikely. Like the absence of the big Tamina sort of pulled over smaller souls to go in the vacuum bodies. Okay. So, like, sort of like a. Use your words. I'm trying to think of a way to explain what I'm thinking because it's souls is a complicated equation. Uh, I mean, I'm not even entirely familiar with what they are, and here I have two of them in my own body or in his own body. From, from what so, I understand, when your soul is. When you die here, it goes back to the ball of souls, the orb of souls. And. Beloth sorts through them. Except one by one. It don't always. I mean. It should. Our demon friends managed to get a hands on, on Mislin. They also um, managed to get their hands on um, Cheapers. What's that spell? That, that wizardling's name? Uh, in a... Animus. Animus. Yeah. That's the one. <clears throat> yeah. So souls don't always go where they're supposed to. And so, okay, it's going to sound a little weird, but you know how on a really hot day, the sun sort of cooks the water and then the water sort of turns in, turns into vapor and the vapor goes into the sky and that's makes clouds heavy and then the clouds, the clouds rain, right? So yes, that's and how then they piss it back on us. Yes. Correct. No, I. So I picture that that's how the soul system you know, with the soul bowl. Now that's how that's supposed to work. But we've also the people here have had the opportunity to, you know, make machines and you know clean water and purify it and boil it and cook food in it and. Um, so what I'm saying is if we could do that as people with water, which is like a mundane substance to us, then would not maybe a soul be a mundane substance to a god or goddess. And therefore, if one was kicked out, they might still be looking to still drink water and boil it to have food and all, all the typical things. So Perhaps Tamina, in her process of creating her other space, vacuumed some of the water mm. that is the souls of our world to do so in her plane. Um, but because the purple tieflings that have been living here had been devoid of souls, but were still present here, when this process was enacted on them, it sort of pulled back a bit of the maddening of these these poor souls that had been uh, uh, washed through this Tamina filter of her plane. Um, and because of that, they, they can't grasp the nature and reality of, of, of where we are now. And it's, it's like... You know I mean, what I am not understanding is that uh, you have been here the whole time, so you must know the stories. Which stories? Oh, for Stories the about ones... Atma? Yes. Um... When the first evil came, it was not from here. I don't know where it was from, but it was not from here. Maybe we can figure it out. I mean, you're not... You may be onto something if you're thinking they come from somewhere else, maybe, or are being filled from someone uh, somewhere else. So basically... I don't know where they go. So basically, mm -hmm. what, sorry? Basically, it's your theory that they hid 
like to me that origin souls that were taken away from them because they had what? no souls and then they hid souls and then they're taking the souls away so more that because the purple teeth things had no souls or were said to have had no souls they correct? were not here when tamina was banished no but also nothing came of it when tamina was banished what do you mean nothing came of it we lost the night we lost our stars but it, it, the world you know, was thrown out of balance it, it was thrown out of balance but would you say that there was <sighs> no actually you know what that's that's a more apt way to put it thank you Roy so yes and I'm saying don't that like these. When you do that. Hmm. Let's agree mm -hmm. with you. I don't like when you thank me for it. It's weird, brother. Well, you... Okay, okay. Will... So, I'm not your brother. I'm more of I a. I know who you are. Okay. Um. And it's from what you have told me, you are an arbor, are you not? Yes, but I I'd be more like your great 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 grand uncle. Okay, uncle. Twice removed. Would you rather I call you uncle? Call me whatever you want. I have a name, but I'm just trying to get to the point, which is but I know, new for me. I'm sorry, but I am trying to get to the point. Um I'm saying that if whatever process was enacted on these poor tieflings left them feral, perhaps it was like activating the vacuum. To suck something in from somewhere else. And sucked something in from somewhere else, which caused them to go feral. And because the system that is here, the you know the, the the soul reign system, if you will, you know, soul enters body, body lives, a soul lives, experiences, goes back to the golden glowy ball, gets recycled, goes back, lives more, uh, all under the guise of Bella and uh, you know, us technically before when we were gods, but when now we're people, um, so that whole system is quite absolute, so. They can't be stealing or vacuuming off of that process, but they could be stealing or vacuuming off of something else. And the only thing that I can think of think to me. is either Tamina's plane or wherever the, the, the demons that seem to haunt uh, Arev, that sort of play, pay, pain, 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 plane, pain, plane, 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 plane. Pain of pain, pain, pain. And either pain of pain. those would be fairly likely to be dark and scary. It does make sense, and we know that at least the from what Arev's told us, them fellas on the pain plane certainly do like bartering with souls and whatnot, trading them like they're pieces of gold. So those Wait. are the uh, those are those are the thoughts. Either it's. Uh, the the chaos that's sort of been caused by Tamina being vacuumed up uh, as these teeth things have been smacked with the hand of get the fuck out um, or maybe it's from the it could also be something some other place we don't know maybe there's some big bad over in the demon plane we've never even thought to consider that's just waiting for their time after we've Fucked around here long enough, but I kind of think you might be right. Now that I mean... makes me nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. you I'm just both. saying, for all of Tamina's eccentricities, she's never harmed this place, though. So I don't know if it would be from wherever she's from. She has, we've seen some of her creatures and none of them have been mindless. Yeah, they're chaotic. 
and creepy, but not excessively but, violent necessarily. Could it have been an unintentional consequence? I mean, it, oh. Tamina herself said she experimented for a little while with her world while she was trying to to grow and create and with all of her boredom, perhaps she... She also said that the Hydra was one of those creations. Yes, but that thing was creepy as hell and terrifying, but it wasn't mindless in its violence. It was smart. And it wasn't decaying. What What about uh, Arev's, Arev's boys? Do you think that maybe like he could contact them and ask what things are there that could come here. If I'm not entirely sure he's still even in contact with them. I would like to make an insight check. Go ahead. 100% Damascus does not buy that at all. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm going to be super paranoid. I'm giving myself a uh, bardic inspiration on it too. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry, James. I, Damascus does not believe that even a little bit. That's fine. That is a 27 insight. Do you want to roll deception? Oh, you did roll a deception. What did you did. get? I got a 24. Okay. So if, if you had mm-hmm. a- added that bardic, I mm-hmm. would have gotten away with it. Would have. I got an eight on the bardic. I rolled pretty good, and then the bardic was what really did it. What do yeah. you? What do you? So what he gleans is that, um, Varian is thinking about how he's woken up twice now, once with spectacles tucked into his uh thing, and then this morning also woke up with like a flower. A really weird, odd blood demony flower. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was. Did you leave that by the way, or did you take that with you? Oh, he left it in the room. Okay. Okay. He did not bring it with him because he didn't know what it was. But twice now he's woken up with like odd things, and so that's that's what crosses his mind while he's going. I am not even sure he's still in contact with him. Um trying to sort of like cover Rev's tracks, even though he's not sure. I'm quite sure he is. He mentioned the other day potentially asking them to use their realm to deal with a battle we might have to face. What ain't you telling us, Varian? Seriously? Now you're silent? It's not not about being silent, Roy. It's about trying to figure out uh, the best 2,500 words to actually tell you. So I'm picking the left 2,500 or the right 2,500. So bear with me because I've given you about 80 so far. So it's going to keep going until we get up to that point. And actually, the more that you interrupt me, that's a funny point. I could actually get lost on that for a minute. But I won't. So Winter puts um, his arm around you. Nah, th- <laughs> I was about to cast the tech thoughts. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that works too. I, I I will stop making you uncomfortable if you actually get to the point. Oh, don't say that. He likes it. <laughs> I, I can make you more uncomfortable. Yeah. What ain't you telling us, Varian? I'm starting to think that maybe there are some times that when I'm with you there that I'm starting to think that Arev might not actually want to be waking up anymore. Wait, what? What does that have to do with... What do you mean by that? Why? What does that even mean? It's just a feeling, but uh, twice now I've woken up and found gifts that are gifts. present. Um, have any of y'all ever met the cunning face-to-face? I don't 
the only other person was do I know literally anything about this? I don't think that I would, right? They have explained to you that they uh that they have talked to demons because they would have when they told you that they were thinking about going okay. to yeah. So but you're like very like demon. not that he has like a a personal relationship with yeah. him. So Arev was yeah, as we mentioned before, there was a bit of a contract that uh Arev accidentally signed with uh, and you, bitch, what? from your chest, miss. That was the last time I mean, sure, but that was. We're not talking about my transgressions here. We're talking about <laughs> uh, good sir, lordly knight, do gooder over there. Oh, he does so. nothing wrong ever. He is the sweetest man, the most beautiful eyes. <laughs> and when I get my body back, I swear to God, you better be out of there, Varian, because bad things are going to happen. <laughs> I. If if I'm not, I certainly will be after that because I'll find a way. <laughs> um, twice now there have been a set of gifts, uh, that are quite clearly demon marked. Um, one of which was the bloody glasses that resided upon the face of the demon known as the Cunning. I woke up with them. Pressed to my chest, ever so lovingly folded. And this morning I woke up with a type of flower I've never seen before. Like a... Some sort of... Lily, but was... Vibrant and alive and the color of blood. And it felt menacing. Beautiful, but menacing. And I'm just saying that some mornings, I think... Some, some mornings I wonder... Whether perhaps there's something going on with Arev and his soul that I'm not aware of. And perhaps that when I'm here and he is non-responsive. Because he's there and doesn't want to be here. Roy looks like, no, that's. Arev is one of the, like, the, the, you can see on his face, like, that just doesn't make sense to him because Arev is Captain Duty. Ha ha. Ha. We're adults. <laughs> 12 year old adults. Oh, shit. Huh. Okay. So Arif has a demon boyfriend, is what we're learning. Two would sounds like. A demon polycule. Great. Okay. Who am I to judge? He would never. He's been visiting them a few times. He, I look at Gilly and I'm like, you weren't even here for the whole coffee situation. Okay. You know that? You know that? Happy um, we got a that... new. It's still there. I've told her not to use it a few times. Oh. Um, yeah. Don't use that. This is why I tell you not to use the white coffee maker. Um, a rev ground up finger and put it in there so that he could talk to them. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Who? Not his. And it was a stone finger, but it's a hole. Yeah, but it came from a live person before that, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's bitter. No, it yeah. definitely was. Okay. I'll I'll stop using it. <laughs> you use it. You can use it. Wait. Yeah, the other one's dirty. Other dirty. Oh my god. Yeah, we're getting a visit dirty. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor oh. Gilly. Oh god. Oh. Right. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. Point is, it it sounds exactly like something a rev would be doing. It also right. means that Does, it's he. He doesn't want to be here anymore. I mean, visiting pretty boys in his dreams at least ain't unheard of. Winter, go flirt with him. <laughs> Make him want to stay here. Idea. You think I'm pretty? Shut up. <laughs> Just as importantly, it sounds like these the demons are able to pass things through to get things here. Which means well, they, they could have been the ones sending souls plan. 
I mean, our plan was to go there. Yeah. But our plan kind of relies on having a good relationship with them, which it sounds like our Ev does. So maybe this isn't a terrible thing. I mean, guess not, except for the fact that they're supposed to be evil. There are degrees of evil. What's evil anyways? I it, don't have it. I mean, I, I kind of have an idea for that one. So. It's a real grumpy sunshine situation. Darian! <laughs> You're awfully quiet. He's still, like, gridlocked with winter. You understand this, right? <laughs> so he's actively oh. shut up. Would you, uh, hang on. And he lets go. <laughs> you get a smack on the butt. Mm -hmm. Go on. Where are we going? <laughs> okay, cool. He's not been paying attention. I apologize. It's Sounds like we need to get to the bottom of what the fuck is causing these tieflings to be uh, feralized. Alternatively, we just need to stop your fucking mom from kicking people's souls out of the body, which frankly is rude, to say the I least. I think we should do that regardless. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan of action. We should we should do that. Definitely. No more feral people, please. Now, that will be easier said than done, since she spends most of her time with the Eldest Druid. Oh, perfect. Taking well, care of her. Or maybe not. Well, so, maybe not me, but, um, you know, I happen to look like a knight of the realm. <laughs> it is. Let me find my wife first before she decides to banish her. That was Got always it. step one. Step one. But here's Wife. step two. I And I physically take another step. And step three. And step four. And I like, like, keep going as I like, mosey off into the distance to like, drag everybody physically forward to get this going. Winter starts walking. Yeah. I really do seem to like having this power. I'm not gonna lie. As you hear, you just hear it as he's walking by. This is this is a lot of fun. I like when you walk away from me. <laughs> Darian walks faster. <laughs> You're getting good at this. We've unleashed a monster, Take Gilly. No, you didn't. Somebody <laughs> did. Yeah, she was a dwarf and had red hair. You that you were totally <laughs> like she'll take care of you, and she did. So you, this is your fault. Yeah, this. Yeah, you. Yeah, this is your fault. Are you complaining? No, not at all. <laughs> and what's the issue? I hate this. I hate. Just don't. Can we not? Like, I don't need to know <laughs> why I know that you are sleeping with him. Shut up. <laughs> And then you guys continue on <laughs> to Thawne, um, which you will get to next week. Huzzah! Uh, GG, guys. Huzzah. Good game back. <laughs> um, I'm Ice Knee Stars. I have been your shenanigan sovereign. Uh, Caro, take it away. I'm Caro. Hello. I was Gilly Ghislaine. Uh, I am Imaginary Caro on TikTok. Uh, James. Hi, I'm James, or uh, as you've heard me for most of the session, Varian Arbor, uh, mm. our wonderful smarmy storm sorcerer who is some bastardized version of Irish. I'm really sorry to anybody who actually has the <laughs> accent. Um, you can find me most places as Mazrix or Mazrix24, most notably on TikTok, where I like to post pleasant, nice comments under people's videos because I have no talent, but I'm a, I, I can say nice things. Shut up! <laughs> Lies and blasphemy. He is so Fuck talented. You. It's ridiculous. He's so talented. No digital. He just talent. never shows any of digital it. Talent. <laughs> so talented. Supporting the talent. It's impressive, honestly. I swoon.
Okay, I'm gonna turn my camera <laughs> I off if you don't all make the me time. blush anymore. Oh, look at look at look at he's turning <laughs> red. Oh, he's Aww. so cute. Take our love and friendship. <laughs> take it, take it. I'll, take I'll take a pinch. Take a pinch. All of it. <laughs> continue uh, we'll continue giving him pinches but that's me uh so tune back next week uh to see whether i uh oh no, well we're not sleeping for a little bit so i'll come back for more of the smarmy accent because it's definitely going to be here uh at least for a bit next week so uh daniel it's your turn hi everybody i'm dan you can find me as the speed of candy on all of the various internet places where most of the time i don't even post comments under people's videos because i'm lazy um but yeah, tonight I have been Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock who's trying to get his patron goddess and his girlfriend to not fight so much. <laughs> I don't know why they don't like each other. It's weird. But it'll be fine. Now kiss. <laughs> Make the dolls kiss. <laughs> I mean, I mean. I mean. Okay. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.